Okay, now we're into the sectors tab. In this case, you can see there are four of them, even though uh, there is actually only three operational sectors today. Um, as part of the pre-flight activity, uh, when I'm setting up, I would populate this with the stuff that I know is going to happen. So today I know that uh, SQR is the airplane. I know that out of Cairns, is that we're going to be using OW1 and there's only going to be two POB. And that sets up the basic weight, empty weight. And also, it also sets up the expiry of the the uh, data for weight and balance that's stored uh, on the company system. So I know that if uh, this date goes red and gets angry, that means I'm using an out-of-date uh, set of data from the company and I just need to check the company's actually reweighed the airplane, etc. Um, so basically, that's probably as much as you would do in pre-flight until you've got the flight plans and stuff. Um, if you have a look at a bit of an overview for a moment, you see there's a couple of sections here. There's the, the stuff over here on the left, uh, and I'll just scroll through you see the blue is the departure and then you get to the bottom of the blue section and now we have the green which is the arrival into Brisbane um, over here on this side is uh, what I call the Rackham area which just allows me to look at multiple instances of uh, takeoff data calculation and compare them uh, and then this little section here is my minima planning so today we are scans for Brisbane so what I'm looking at is Brisbane and uh, right away you can see all the runways and the different approaches um, that potentially we can do and then the, the additives are pre-calculated. So these are the landing minima here uh, and these are the destination planning minima which at the moment we don't use and these are the alternate uh, planning minima. Uh, and if you want to limit yourself to a, a particular runway you can choose that in here and now it filters down to just the runway. Um, and that works for any air airport so if we were looking at uh, 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 Melbourne it would go Melbourne. So uh, back to Brisbane Okay, so that, that's just sitting there in case I need it during pre-flight. That's an overview. Okay, the, the reason the sheet is designed with this very vertical format on the light on the left here is because what it allows me to do is it allows me to have this sitting here for pre-flight type stuff. So I've got my my uh, my um, Jeppesen app or whatever is running today and uh, I can grab Excel and just pop it up here, change the zoom, and now this little strip here is sits there perfect. It can be over on the left, it can be on the right, whatever. So if I'm talking about the departure, I've got the blue stuff here sitting ready to go, and and that'll, and uh, particularly for things like ATIS and calculating N1s and speeds and stuff, uh, and then scroll down for the arrival. So that's why it's decided in that, that thin format like that. So let's go back to full-on Excel. Oh, no, let's go back to full-on Excel. Okay, so now the flight plan arrives, and I know that uh, it's 4,500 kilos today. Once again, I'm typing it in because I like to use an iPad with a keyboard, but these numbers are all selectable here in these lists, of these smart lists. It's uh, another two tonnes to get to uh, the alternate today. The fixed reserve is 800, and they've given us 800 kilos of margin. Uh, the Brisbane doesn't actually require, or the alternate doesn't require 800 kilos, but they've put it in there anyway. And you can see that it's actually worked out that based at the moment, and it's using max landing weight because it does know how, how heavy the airplane is. At the moment, it's said that's about 25 minutes of holding fuel. Uh, the variable reserve is 180, and uh, today we're taking 8,800 out of cans. So right away, it's now calculated that we have an extra fuel figure of 290. So one of the things I do is having typed these green numbers in, I look at the, the flight plan, and if that says 290 and this says 290, then I know, hey, they're pretty good. Min fuel today is 8510, so that's what I need to actually accomplish the mission. Uh, I can go down here and I can say, okay, uh, 30 minutes hold, how much is that worth? And that's 933 kilos. Uh, based on the landing weight. Um, all right, so that's the CFP stuff. Then we get a load sheet, and the load sheet comes in and says you're carrying 6.5 tonne today out of cans, and now it calculates. So that empty weight, by the way, comes from this uh, OW1 thing and the, the lookup, uh, and it's, it expires on the 14th of January, 24, so there's just enough time to get the job done. And it's worked out zero fuel weight, ramp, takeoff weight, and landing weight. And that allows me to cross-check the load sheet that comes through. Uh, over here are some green numbers, and that's telling me that uh, based on zero fuel weight, I have 5.6 tonnes to play with. Based on ramp weight, 5.4, takeoff weight, landing weight. Landing weight being the most limiting, I've got another 400 kilos of load, which would end up being a mix of fuel and, and weight that I can lift today based on a limiting landing weight solution. Uh, meanwhile, so that gives me all the load stuff. Uh, now I need some ATIS stuff for cans, and you'll notice these are all calculated, and that's they're all errors at the moment because uh, just of the way I've designed the sheet, but I'm going to overwrite them anyway. So what I need now is I need some ATIS information, so what I might do is drag that over there. Now I've got the ATIS here in cans. It's uh, 
fruit. It's runway 33. Three. Well, I'm going to go off 15 anyway. That's just the kind of weirdo I am. So 15, the wind is 030 three, zero at 10. You'll notice that all this is preset, and here it's in 10 degree increments because that's how it works on the ATIS. But if you get really angry and scroll down the bottom, they're all there. Um, and you can choose variable as well. And obviously, if you choose variable at five knots, then it kind of assumes you're going to get a five knot tail. Uh, but again, you can modify that behavior. The O outside air temperature is, oh God, 32 degrees. It's certainly what it feels like here in the hotel room. Q and H, 1002. So that's going to be a decrement as well. And now I've got my ATIS fulfilled. So that's all done. You can see that I'm getting a red angry 10 knots there. That's because 10, that 03010 is giving me five knots of tailwind component. Um, you'll notice that it's worked out that in this particular aeroplane today, we have a 15 knot tailwind. In this particular aeroplane, we have a crosswind of a 35 knot limit. Uh, the 200, the 300, the different aircraft have different crosswind limits. So they're all populated in there. And if the crosswind is over 35, it'll get angry and red. If the tail, any tailwind, it goes red. And if the tailwind was, uh, it, oh. If the tailwind was excessive, it gets very angry. Okay, uh, here I've got a nice deviation on the ground, so it's letting me know that. Based on that information, it's been able to pre-calculate my N1 ref. It's using uh, the temperature. Where's the temperature? It's using the temperature and the Q&H, and it's using the elevation of the runway plus the pressure, uh, uh, the pressure in order to calculate a pressure altitude to then give me 91.2 and N1 climb. We're planning on climbing to 270, and from the flight plan, the ISA deviation is plus 20. And that's telling me that my cruise takeoff weight limit for a cruise at level 270 is actually 35.5. So today I'm going to go, okay, well, we may have to go at uh, 25. Uh, no, can't even do that, really. 230. Holy cow. Let's just say it's not that warm. Right. Okay. So just out of curiosity, if we were planning at 27, what is the ISA deviation? Okay, so ISA plus 14 is what we'd be looking at today. Okay, but in any case, this just allows you to cross-check the residual 500 foot a minute climb from the, um, the handbook. Okay, so there's my pre-flight stuff kind of all done. Now what I want to do is I want to have a look at the rack manual uh, and validate some takeoff performance. Um, 3, 3 and 1, 5, so we probably just want to look at two runways. And uh, so you'll see that a lot of this stuff is pre-filled in. It's not happy, it's incomplete, which is why it's saying incomplete up there, but it knows the takeoff weight is going to be 38.8. It's decided that I pick runway 15, so it's defaulted there to 15, but I, but I can change that, and that list is sensitive, context sensitive based on being in Cairns. Flap 18 takeoff, again, that's a default, but I could go in here and change that too. The OAT is 32, and the EAI is off, and if you put 32 and 10 the EAI on, it'll get upset. Um, if you... Um, uh, yeah, so uh, when we one five, we tend to use a Bravo two intersection departure one five. So I'll choose that one, and let's pop over to the Rackham now and see if. All right, so here we go. We've got runway one five and B two is over here on the left. So that's a bit dodgy, a bit dicky. I'm going to have to sort of that. And based on wind, and I can decide here. It's it's going to use a five knot tail, but I could override that and say, yeah, actually no, it's a, it's a. It's a 10 knot tail, or I can leave it with the default five knots. Based on the outside air temperature, um, my max flex is 42, and I'm gonna pop down here on the right, and I can see that I've got a 40 line to play with, and a 45, but 42 doesn't exist in the data. So in this particular instance, I'm just gonna use the 45, and I'm gonna say that if I look over here, Bravo DP5, Bravo 2, and take 45, I've got 40.4 and 129. So 40.4 and 129, like so. And even though I use the 45 line, when it comes to type uh, doing the takeoff, we're going, to, we're going to use a 42. And right away it's saying, yeah, sorry, dude, you're 900 kilos over um, on your uh, five knot tail for a tailwind departure. We could say, well, uh, what tailwind can we take? Uh, well, you could try a four knot tail or not. You could try a three knot tail or not. You could try, I'll get there eventually, two knot. Okay, so we could do a two knot tail in this particular instance. Obviously this is max flex. So if we wanted to go with the five knot tail, the, the question is um, how much 
flex would we lose? So let's pop in here and say, well, 40 to 40 is uh, 41 points. I'm looking at in over here. So 40 degrees is 41.6. So if we were to use 40 degrees, and therefore the limit would be 41.6, and I'll do it quickly, the 130 is the limiting V1. And that's telling me, yeah, we can do that. And we have, in fact, 38.8, 39.1. We've got a 300 kilo margin there. So there is my 1.5 tailwind solution. But let's face it, we're going to be using 3.3. So in the second column over here, I'll do a second calculation and I'll go, yeah, we're going off runway 1.3, still using flap 18 dry. You'll notice now the wind is now not a tailwind. It's a five knot headwind. Uh, and I need to pick a Rackham. I don't want to use 15 dB82. I want to use 33, the Bravo 5 intersection. So that means I need to go over here and find a different flap 18, 33, Bravo 5. And once again, it's in the right-hand column, which is annoying, but, you know, tough. And I'm, going to use, I'm not going to override the wind. We're just going to go with the calculated 5 knot headwind. And uh, I'm expecting that we're going to be able to use full flex and 42 i can't do 42 it's not any but i can do 45 and 45 is uh 41 1 129 41 1 129 all right now one of the things i need to check when i do this and i didn't do it before my bad is that down the bottom here you'll see there's a series of corrections 98 373 1 and 61 and those are replicated here by formula using lookup 98, 373, 161. So what that means is the corrections, these are the ones obviously that you that are valid and because those are replicated accurately in the spreadsheet, this calculation here is also valid and I should have checked them in the previous one um, there as well, but I know they're correct because I, I check them every time I fly. So, but basically I've now got two solutions. I've got uh, on the left here, I've got Rackham number one, which is the one five with five knots of tail and I can't use full flex. And I've got the 3.3 uh, um, three, three, uh, with full flex and uh, we've got 38.8 to 40.4. We've got a bit of a margin there. And they're green, so they're complete. So what I could do now is get rid of this, pop back over here and change my mind and go, yeah, no, we're going to do 3.3. Three, three. Of course we're going to do 3.3. Three, three. And then down in this section here, you've got the speed card section. I would change that to say, no, we're not doing the tail end off uh, Bravo 215. We're doing this one. And now it's filled in the, the weight, speed card weight, which is the rounded up takeoff weight from the top. 38783 becomes a 39 ton card. We're doing flap 18, and that's green because it matches the choice of flap 18 over here. So it's happy, but if I'd done flap 24 up here and chosen flap 18 down here, it would get upset. The V1 uh, from the speed card is 130. There is no VR correction today, so the V1 VR should be 130. However, you might remember that we have a 129 knot limit, and so that 129 has been brought in, and it's showing orange to let you know that you're being limited by the Rackham. But the VR is 130, the V2 136, VFTO, VR, all, whoops, all pre-calculated there. Uh, over here is the possibility of a V2 correction, which we see very rarely because it only happens at light weight. There's the one I chose. Uh, a reminder that my Rackham V1 is 129 and off runway 33, the noise abatement is standard. And that's really the end of that blue takeoff section. And as I mentioned, the intent of the shape of this is that you can just sit this here and scroll to the bit you need. Uh, so when the FO hands me the takeoff data card, I can pop over here and have a look at the solution that we're going to be using and I can check his numbers against what I've calculated here and then when it comes to the speed card, the actual speeds, I can check and see whether he's remembered to do, he or she has remembered to do the limiting V1, uh, whether there was a VR correction, what the noise abatement is, etc. And so it, it allows me to, having done a little bit of pre-work, it allows me to accurately cross-check a, a data card. So that's the end of the departure section of um, this, this sector one sheet. Let's uh, do a second video for the arrival.